What you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. everyone all of you great decoders around the world wherever you may be my name is logan and this is decode your reality and today we're going to be breaking down and decoding the eye in the sky this will be eye in the sky decoded and You know, partially this decode was inspired by the great band, The Alan Parsons Project. Not sure if the song is still playing, the instrumental version of Eye in the Sky, but we're going to bring some of that in here to show you how that band was being used and living out their blueprint and following their script. And um, we're going to be showing some nuggets on what, what is the eye in the sky and how does it perhaps rule over us? So let's hop into this Eye in the Sky Decoded. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be another gem. Put on a pair of headphones, get settled in, get comfortable. This one's going to be a lot of fun. So I had made this slide uh, many, many many months ago and and put it out on my social media. There was a few other ones that I put out there as well, but I thought this was kind of interesting. And you notice at the very top left hand of your corner, there is the title of the song and the title of this decode, I in the sky and it it equals the number 37 now if you've been following this research you know the 37 is tied to the loop the 1937 46 but the 37 goes to alchemy to give us another bridge of what is the eye in the sky and it's this element called rubidium comes from the latin word rubidius and you know it's average atomic weight is 85 it's most abundant is 84 and this is exactly what i'm talking about how we live in a scripted reality you know this royal society of chemistry they people that put this stuff up they may become aware of it but i'm going to show you with clear and convincing support that you know this is we're just living out a script and we're and mankind's just along for the ride and it's a lot of fun when you just kind of let go and surrender here but this is the icon the royal society of chemistry uses to represent this element rubidium and it says the image of an electric eye is inspired by the use of rubidium in photocells. So, you know, yeah, rubidium is used in photocells, but there's that eye, and it's the electric eye. Judas Priest had that song off their album, Defenders of Faith, called Electric Eye. I think that was off that album. And it's just, this is where you're going to get the all-seeing eye from, ladies. And so, you you know, it's not evil. We we have to really kind of start to look at these concepts just a little bit deeper and see how the machinations of this reality works because i mean the word what are the odds the word shepherd (laughs) is a 37 and what does a shepherd do it manages the sheep and just like that we have the 26. now i know some of you a lot of some people well i'm not a sheep well if you're on this planet uh yeah you kind of are in this context here doesn't mean you're dumb or you're following, you know, the crowd that is, you know, hasn't figured it out. And, you know, everybody here was asleep at one time. And isn't it funny that when we go to sleep, you can count sheep, right? But this is, this is the comedy and the 26 tied to Adam and Eve and theology, that story. And it's tied to this element called iron. 
and we have iron in our blood and without iron in our blood you you know you can get anemia and you can die from it but we have iron which you know makes the oxygen go round and round and this is kind of how we roll in this reality and this is kind of the comedy the shepherd uh, herding the sheep and it's in the context the esoteric from nature it's the eye in the sky that's exactly what this stuff means here so i had come out with this slide on my bloodline decoded one of my favorite decodes i've done so far and it was on the mighty star sirius and is the eye in the sky is it serious I mean, are you serious? Could it be serious? Is the sun in our sky, is it just serious? Or is there a opposite, is there a star out there, you know, that they, they call serious in the sky and is it separate? Well, it appears to be that way, but is serious in the sun in a binary system and they're kind of, you know, doing this tandem thing and this dance and, you know, look at the outcomes of what this comes out to be. And you can see this on my bloodline decoded. You know, Sirius is a 16, and then the word Japan from the country Japan is a 16. The reason why I'd showed this is because here's the flag of Japan, and what do you see right there? Well, it sure as hell looks like a big red spot, which I think is the blood. And if, if you watched my um, Bloodline Decoded, I showed how perhaps some of our origins were in Japan, which is known as the land of the rising sun, which is an 85. And this 85 was huge because it was linked to Sirius, the actual numerology of Sirius and then it's tied to the number 439 and this was really really a gem of a find because if you take the number 16 found from the word Sirius and you place it into the string of the golden ratio golden meaning sun it occupies digits 219 and 220 and when you add that up you get that 439 whoops and there you're going to get that number 85 and Sirius through the Greek the original spelling of it the numerology is 85 and then you have the tower card here and you know perhaps telling all of us how we all got here there's so many great synchronicities with this with the eye in the sky but that was the intro ladies and gentlemen so let's get into the topics of conversation for this presentation i want to break down the song in the band that will be in topic number one alan and of course alan al and aluminium and illumination if you haven't checked out my illumination decoded it's all about the al and the 13 and the 26. number two i can read your mind that was part of the lyrics off of the song number three what and number four womb to tomb and of course i'm going to ask all of you what you saw at the end of this presentation so take some notes and let me know what you find out here let's get into the first topic now called alan the alan parsons project and this this was off their 1984 album called eye in the sky and right on the album cover is the eye of horus and what i decided to do was take the lyrics some of them this is not all of them and I want, I located, where is the first line in this song that says, I am the eye in the sky? Well, it's this one right here, line number 15. There's 15 lines, and then it says, I am the eye in the sky, looking at you. You know, I am not. So this was a very important piece of it all, the, all these lyrics from 1 to 15. And so we start to connect the dots with this 15, and bam, just like that, we have alchemy telling the story of what the eye in the sky is tied to it's tied to the sun folks because you see this element phosphorus which is tied to lucifer the greeks call lucifer phosphorus or at least tied into that is this 15th element for its protons and then if we take a step back we get the weight of an element and that would be the element oxygen which is 21% of the air that we breathe is oxygen. Things get oxidized. If you have a paint job, it gets oxidized. That's because the sun damages your paint. So oxygen, you have the oxidative stress in your body and it, it can be a doozy. And this is 21% of the air that we breathe and the other part, 79% roughly is nitrogen. But this is really interesting because this number eight right here for the protons of oxygen kind of matches up with the sun and the patterns it makes right here this is called an analema shape this is what the sun makes as it moves through the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn and this is not an accident so again you know did alan parsons and the band do they know 
that the 15 was tied to oxygen? Did they know that it would tie to the analema? And, you know, are they referencing the eye in the sky to the sun above our heads? Because you can clearly see, I mean, this is a no brainer that the eight is right there on the oxygen and the 15 is the weight. And look at right at the lyric saying, I am in the eye of the sky. It's line number 15. I mean, you can't get any more clear. I've done, I've broken down Pink Floyd with this. I mean, it just gets ridiculous. These people were being used. I'm going to support that as we continue to go along with this first topic of Alan. But how about the actual line number 15 breakdown for the numerology? I am the eye in the sky. Look at what the outcome is, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the comedy, because as we know, the Truman Show equals the number 57. What was watching Truman? Serious. I mean, the song that precedes Eye in the Sky on this album is called Serious. And then it goes right into eye in the sky. Sirius is one minute and 54 seconds long. That's tied to gadolinium and the television that we're on. And we're being watched. We're entertainment. <clears throat> but I, I, am an, I am the eye in the sky, 57. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, undeniable, the connection. Look at what the icon is for this element. It's a freaking camera lens. And we're talking about looking at us. I am the eye in the sky looking at you. I mean, right there, you can't miss this now. This is the comedy, folks. These are all bridges to tell us the story that we're not alone, we're being watched, and I believe mankind's being used to play out the game. Just wh how that works, well, you'll have to be the decider of that. But, you know, this element right here is means the, the one that lies hidden. The one that lies hidden, Lanthanum. And then there's that 138, if you follow Jason from Archaics, Heath says that every, the Phoenix event is every 138 years and the Phoenix events tied to the sun. And this all is talking about the sun, perhaps talking about Sirius and Sirius coming back and being the disruptor. Because if you read the ancient text, it talks all about ancient Egypt and paying reverence to the, the mighty star Sirius and Sirius causing great havoc on the Nile River and et cetera, et cetera. So we have connections to the sun and then to the mighty star Sirius. And obviously, again, Again, the song series precedes Eye in the Sky off their great album 1984, Eye in the Sky. So these are undeniable right here. And we're being watched, folks. That's why it says, I'm looking at you. I can read your mind. I am the maker of rules, dealing with fools. That's right here. This is the all-seeing eye through this icon. And it's the one that lies hidden. No brainer here, right? Your jaw should be on the floor. This is a lot of fun when you start to see these codes. This is the source code. This is not man coding it. This is mankind being used to write the code. Okay, so going a little bit further, I decided to take all those lyrics, all those lines right here, the first 15. Now you could do the entire song. Some of you want to jump in and do that. I'll leave that up to you. But of course, this is the important one because it, it starts at line 15 by first saying the, the confirmation, the statement, I am the eye in the sky. So I wanted to decode all 15 light items and here it was right here. And you'll notice that it's 343 letters and 84 words. And the 84 was a dead giveaway. I go right back to the 37th element, which has the electric eye as its icon. And there's rubidium's most abundant isotope. This is going to be isotope 85, but it has a weight of 84. And there's the 37 tied to the word eye in the sky and shepherd and all that stuff. But what about this 343? What about this 1323? Well, let's start with the 1323 and go to the number empire.com. And let's see, is it a prime number? Well, it's not a prime number, but what we're going to do, because if you uh, hopefully you watched how to decode using the primes, is when you get a number like this and it's not a prime, it's a composite number, meaning many numbers can attach to it. We want to go to the next prime number to see what's fathering over it. And it's this 1327 and bam, just like that, we get the number 217. I'm going to come back to that in just a little bit. Just remember 217 is what this 1323 is tied to from the composite tying into the prime. Okay. So we're going to come back to that. But what about this 343? What about that 343? Well, I mean, it's tied to the word sun in Hebrew, right? So this language, of course, is much older than the English. 
has antiquity over the English language. I'm not saying it's the boss because this is going to come <coughs> from Phoenician and Sumeria. And so there are many languages passed on, but nonetheless, here is the 343. The, 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 the word son in Hebrew slash Aramaic is a 343. And this is talking about I am the eye in the sky with the analema shape, the number eight, and the all-seeing eye, not only through this, but again, through this element, lanthanum, which means to lie hidden. See, ladies and gentlemen, how about that? With all these connections, I mean, this is just laughable. All these connections that we're showing here, 343 letters, when it first says, I am the eye in the sky, and it's a total of 10, and you know, you go to the Hebrew alphabet, and the 10th letter is the Yod. So is the yod heh vah the tetra, is it just the sun? Is it just the sun? Or is it above that and is the Christ the Yod? Is Yaldabaoth the Yod? Is Lucifer the Yod? We have to take all these questions into consideration. And then here's the referencing point of the great beast. You take the 343, you put it into the string of pi, and you measure that and look at where that 340, 343 appears at the 666 decimal digit. And there you go. Bam. Just like that, we have the beast above our head, which is the sun. And it can be a beast, man. If you're in the desert, Arizona, Las Vegas, in the middle of summer when it's 115 degrees, man, it is definitely a beast. Okay. So this is, this is definite in my book right here. This is off of my Superstar Decoded, if you wanted to go a little bit further. Some of my favorite decodes, Superstar 1, 2, and 3, showing the patterns of the sun. So let's get into the band members now. Let's get into the band members that, that were part of this song. And I'm just going to go right back to the, <coughs> the Eye in the Sky, the song, and scroll down here. And here is the, right here, here's the personnel. Here are the six members that are listed for creating, producing, singing, et cetera, et cetera, for this song, Eye in the Sky. So I'm going to decode them. Alan Parsons, Alec Wolfson, Ian Barnson, David Patton, Chris Rainbow, and Stuart Elliott. These are the six guys that were listed as the personnel. And if you start to look at their birthdays, 20th of December, 18th of March, 3rd of August, 29th of October, 18th of November, and Stuart Elliott, 22nd of May. And we're going to add that up, of course. And just like that, we have 110. So I'm going to take this 110, and I'm going to go into the string of pi again. And where's that 110 up here in the string of pi? Ladies and gentlemen, just like that, we have another connection to Lucifer because 174, when you look at 174, it's tied to the 71st element called Lutetium, Lucy in the sky with diamonds, Lucifer. See, and its average weight is 174. And Lutetium is 33. If you do the numerology of that, this is these are no-brainers now. 71 is the 20th prime number. I'm going to be showing that. But I mean, folks, you know what would have to go into these guys you know, coming together and sitting down before they ever become, ever become band members. Like, hey, let's do an album called Eye in the Sky. And they have to, you have to cast the band members. Do you know what would have to go into that to get all this stuff right? I mean, that's just ludicrous thinking. I've shown it in Bled Zeppelin, Prince, Michael Jackson, Pink Floyd, Living Color, The Beatles. It goes on and on. I've shown so many bands. I have the Eagles going to be showing. Folks, all these bands... They came together because they were supposed to because their minds are not their own. They were being used to create these, this music and entertain the gods, whatever that looks like. So now I'm going to fact check it against the cards of illumination. Here are each of the members' cards associated with their birthdays. Jack of hearts, five diamonds, ten diamonds, six hearts, ten of clubs, two of clubs. And you can fact check this if you want to. Here's the boilerplate chart for the cards of illumination. I would hope that you have this chart now. I'm not going to go through these one by one for time's sake here. But here are the cards, the 11th, the 31st, the 36th, the 6th, the 23rd, and the 15th. So I'm going to add that up. And just like that, we have another comical aspect outcome here. It's the 122. And ladies and gentlemen, now here I'm going to ask you, do you think these people are trying to mock you, number one? And number two, do you think that they know how this whole thing works? Or do you think perhaps they're just being used with these outcomes? Because what is this 122? Bam! It's antimony. Antimony has several atomic masses. This is one of its most abundant 100. 
and 22. And if you go to antimony, folks, if I go to antimony, here it is. What do you see right there for its icon? The all-seeing eye of Horus. And then you go to the album, and what do you see right there on their album cover? The freaking all-seeing eye of Horus. So ladies and gentlemen, this is absolute. There's no fudging anything. This is, this, this is absolute. And you know, this comes from the Greek words anti-monos, meaning not alone. This is the all-seeing eye of Horus inside your brain. Inside your brain. And antimony is 28, Lucifer is 28. And these band members, through their cards now, end up tying to antimony. And the all-seeing eye of Horus, and that's what they have on their album cover right there. Look at the match, folks. Undeniable, more comedy. These people were being used to write the music. I mean, Alan Parsons is very heavily involved with the occult stuff. That he's big into the cards. and But folks, I mean, is he sitting... I mean, these are all these guys into the occult? They're trying to, you know, get this all right? I mean, I, folks, no way. As I, as I said, I've shown so many bands and singers and artists and actors and actresses. But anyway, in the song, Eye in the Sky, you know, Alan Parsons saying, I can read your mind. This is the Eye in the Sky talking now, talking through Alison, Alan Parsons. Alan, Al, aluminum, which is the 13th element tied to the sun. But it's, I can read your mind being the 52. And we connect the 52 to the element that's tied to the prison planet. It's tellurium coming from the Latin word tellus, and it means earth. That's why the icon is what it is right here. Forget about the shape. It just means earth. We know what this means. And then prison planet, as I've been showing, is 52. So when, you, when you're standing on the earth, you become part of the earth. You become, the, the earth is the motherboard. And when, you put your, when you're born into the motherboard and you're on it, you're now part of it. And your mind gets red. And you, there's no escaping that. So going further with this, how about doing the numerology of tellurium? It's 34. And what, what, what does our mind do? It thinks and we have thoughts. <laughs> and, you know, this is how your mind gets red through having a thought. I just had a thought yesterday. I just had a thought I should do this, you know. It's, it, it's the as above controlling the so below, which is who we all are. We're having thoughts with our mind. And that's why our minds can get red. So, I mean, this is, I've shown this so much. I mean, our brains, there it's a receiving station, giving feedback. Feedback is 30. Role play is 30. Demiurge is 30. Jehovah is 30. And this, this is, I think this is the implant in our brains from, you know, from a robotic aspect, but it's the all-seeing eye of Horus, which is what Alan Parsons project and band and company were singing about. So we have these thoughts and I, and I feel like, you know, the earth again is the motherboard. And this is a great rendition of, you know, the Taurus field coming off earth and it being very magnetic and we're electrical sources of being, and we live in a magnetic and electric universe. You know, magnetic and electric is 52. Prison planet is 52. And, you know, the brain, is the earth just a big brain? Is it the hive mind? Well, I think so. I think so. And our, we're very magnetic and electric human beings. So when we think, I think. I, how many times do we say this in the vocabulary, in the language? For English, anyway. I think this. I think that. I don't think so. It's 17. And then we correlate that to one of the tarot cards. And just like that, we now have the stars born. We're all stars here. And this is the 17th card. Superstar, rock star, movie star. What kind of star are you? But you're thinking, right? You're a star that thinks. So we're just fallen angels, stars. And is just this the mighty star serious behind the head of this character over the shoulder? You know, but the star is born 17. And then we have more connections because we now go to alchemy and we have this element to get a broader scope of how this reality works. It's now chlorine. I showed this so many decos now, especially my bloodline being tied to the possibly the first blood type, the blood type O. But chlorine being the 17th element, the notice the weight, 35. 35 is tied to the word simulation and dimension. That's what we're playing out down here. We're playing inside of a simulation. And then 45 is tied to Pandora's box. 45 is tied to fallen angels. <laughs> you 
you know, and rhodium. And so we just keep going and there it is. If you add up, this is a way you should be decoding. If you're using the alchemical elements, you take the protons and you add it to the atomic mass. Just the masculine side. The masculine side is the left of the decimal. You can add the, the feminine as well, but the protons added to the atomic mass, 17 plus 35, it's going to give you 52. This is not an accident, ladies and gentlemen. This is part of the source code playing out. 52, 52 cards in a playing deck, uh, a deck of playing cards. That's why the 52 is so special. 52 weeks in a year. That's why this 52 is so big. 52 is going to reduce down to the number seven. And that's going to be tied to the number 17 because 17 is the seventh prime number and there's the 17th card. It's all based on symbols and numerology and the science of numbers and physics and mathematics and trigonometry and sine and cosine waves. And let's not forget the golden ratio, the string of the golden ratio, which is tied to the sun. And 17 appears at digit 35 and 36, can even be 37 because if you add in the, the one point, but nonetheless, leaving the one point out, it's the 35th and 36th decimal digit. And 35 and 36, if you add it up, is going to give you 71. And we go back to alchemy. What's 71? We go back once again and we tap into lutetium. Why is my thing so slow here? I'm slowed down here. No, well, 71 lutetium. I slowed down on my internet. But there it is, and 35 tied to the simulation, 36 tied to the word operating, as in the operating system, okay? And then the 17 in the string of pi, 17 is appearing at the 95th and 96th decimal digit. 95 is tied to the am. Go back to alchemy again. There's the I am. I am that I am. We say that a lot. I am this. I am that. Is it you saying it? Is it you saying this or is it just the voice in your head controlling you from outside this reality? That's my final answer at this point. We are being used and our voice, the voice in our head owns us. We don't have control over that. It's just the way it is. So here are some more big time links to the 17. I've been showing these over and over. Many of you great decoders are doing that. Life is 17. Here's the yod heh vah -Hey, the Tetragrammaton 17, and then the actor. So is it just, in this context, is it the, is, is it God through the Israelite God of the Bible, the yod heh vah is it the yod heh vah -Hey coming down to become an actor and play out this world's game and be a star in a movie? I think we're in a movie. I believe Earth is a movie, and we're all stars down here, depending on your role. But I mean, Matrix is 17. I mean, look at all these 17s in the same exact cipher, linking it to chlorine and the star card. And when we keep going, we move back to this word, think, I think, therefore I am. So we bring in another layer, the cards of illumination, remember 52 cards matching, I can read your mind. Here's the 17th card, the four of clubs. It's an air suit now, and the air suit represents the thinking suit. So obviously it's perfectly aligned with this script. And then we want to get the picture through the tarot and just like that, bam, there it is. It's the four of wands. It's the 26th card in the deck. This means happy home. And you know, th this, this is the castle and the two people, but what is the home? It's your temple. It's your body. Four clubs is the four of wands, 26 card, and we go right back to that word thinking. I think, I'm thinking, I'm a thinker. Could have added that in there. But the 26 is tied to the yod heh vah -Heh through the original spelling in the Hebrew. These ideas, which probably, you know, in my opinion, got passed down from ancient Egypt. The Holy Bible is just a different story told from a, a, the same origins tied to Ra and Horus and set and all the egyptian gods all kind of tied together just told in a different story for the, the age of pisces all right and remember 26 is tied to the sheep tied to us you know and so are our minds our own that's the thing you got to think about how about the word brain the word brain is 11 and we bring that into the string of the golden ratio the brains the receiving station has the pineal gland in there check out my pineal decoded 11 appears at the 34th and 35th decimal digit. 34 and 35, 69, yin yang. That's what your brain, your brain has two hemispheres. So here it is, thought. I mean, folks, what are the odds, right? This is the source code. It's the golden ratio controlling the brain. 
controlling the thoughts. It's not, it's not us, it's it. Check out my it uh, decoded. The discourse by Werner Erhard. It thinks. You're just along for the ride. The brain is the receiving station of the thought. And the thoughts you're having are the little voice in your head and you don't own that, it owns you. So here's the 69 in the brain. The brain has two hemispheres. You put the 69 right into the yin-yang and just like that we have duality. We have duality and there's so many ways we can branch off with this. And the yin-yang is the angel and demon inside of you. Constantly push-pull, push-pull, push-pull. It's a sliding scale. And this is kind of the puppet master. One hand and the other hand, right hand, left hand. The puppet master with the strings. One's a demon, one's an angel. Controlling us and this wheel spins as you move through time. This is tied to earth as well. But the yin yang fits right in there, ladies and gentlemen. So let's bring in more layers to this using alchemy. So brain is the number 11. Brain is the number 11. And then you have this element right here tied to the number 11 called sodium. Sodium is got a weight of 22.990. The 22 is tied to titanium. The titans in the fallen angel story. Here's the icon the Royal Society of Chemistry uses for this element called sodium. Look at what you see right there. It's the number 11 right on there. And then this flash behind there. There's so much layers of symbology here. And when we go further, this is this was got really interesting. I try to look at everything I can. You'll notice that the boiling point, the boiling point, making a tran it's a transmutation from one to the next. It's 1621 degrees Fahrenheit, 1621.292. And I knew it because I know what the 1621 is linked to. And folks, just like that, we have the two emotions that rule over us. And I think, you know, just ask yourself, like, what do you think the odds would be? And I'm using the same Chaldean numeral, the oldest known numerology cipher on the planet, keeping it sta staying in the Chaldean family. What are the odds that our two emotions that run our reality, fear and love? If you're not doing love, you're doing fear. If you're not doing fear, you, do, you can't do both at the same time. And it's the yin yang. That's why I'm saying like the, we go through this. This is exactly, this is love and fear right here. The yin yang, 69. And we have this fear and love. And the boiling point of sodium, which has got 11 protons and the brain equals 11. And its icon has this 11. I mean, come on, what are the odds, folks? You start to see, this is the source code, man. Man did not write this. And it's fear and love. And that's what we all experience. So this fear and love is the 37. And remember, what is 37? Eye in the sky. Eye in the sky equals 37. So do, does the eye in the sky have love and fear? Just like us. Well, it would have to. It would have to because it owns it all. But this 1621 is a very special number because it's not just any number. It's the freaking 257th prime number. And it's tied to this element called fermium. It's element number 100. I showed this in so many other decodes, how important this element is through alchemy and what it means. And it's tied to this show right here. Came out on the CW. It's a great show. But this show was the story about these kids that were in an ark in space and the, the earth was uninhabitable. So they get sent down. They're prisoners and they get sent down to see if the earth is inhabitable again. They, they're like, they get tested. They're like the guinea pigs after, a, after a, a nuclear war. Think about what I'm telling you here. Okay, and then you have the 18 here and the symbology of that. 18 is going to be tied to the moon. Perhaps the portal to get in here from the moon. So many ways to look at this. But once you incarnate into a human being and you become part of the fallen angel story, that's what this whole thing means. You instantly have fear and love. And now you're ruled over by this, these two emotions and 37 is tied to the shepherd and the eye in the sky. Our minds are not our own, folks. So let's go a little bit further. How about the Latinized spelling of sodium? It's called natrium. That's what the NA abbreviation is on this element. It's the 23 and it gets just more crystal clear about what the eye in the sky is running, our brains. Because the word crown is 23. The word blood is 23. The word history is 23. What runs history? Well, we're being used to create it. 
And what is the top of your head called? The crown? The crown chakra? Where the brain sits. I mean, you can't get any more apparent than this right here, ladies and gentlemen. And 23 in numerology is called the royal star of the lion tied to the sun, the eye in the sky. Just keeps going on and on. How about the tarot card that is tied to sodium? It's this 11th card called justice. And when you do the numerology of justice, bam, there's the 23 again. And you know, this element right here, by the way, is called isotope 23 because the science is going to round up. So so I have a weight of 22, but it'll be rounding up to 23. This will be isotope 23. And that's going to be tied to vanadium with the V and, you know, you can, you can go gangbusters with this when you start to look at all the layers. But of course, what is mankind all about? The majority of them? Justice. Not all of them, but I mean, they, you know, you're being used to play your character. So justice gets served. And now we're moving into the age of Aquarius and the age of Aquarius is the 11th zodiac sign. You know, the age of Aquarius, supposedly, it's, I know, I know thyself. And will justice get served during the age of Aquarius? Well, let's see, time will tell. <clears throat> so interestingly enough, I wanted to go a little bit further with this one, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the guy who discovered I've shown this before with Humphrey Davy, Sir Humphrey Davy. He's the guy who discovered sodium. He was born on the first day of Saturnalia. So Saturn comes into play here, December 17th. He discovered sodium and look at what his birth card is. It's the ace of clubs, card number 14. And this is how ridiculously scripted this guy's life was. I mean, he discovers sodium. His birth card is the 14th card in the deck and the word mind equals 14. What do you think the brain is also called? The mind. And then brain is 11 and sodium is 11. You see how all this ties together? This guy's being used to discover sodium. It's not a bad thing, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever it is you're doing on the world stage, you're doing it because you're supposed to do it. It's part of your screenplay, part of your script. Here's the tarot card that came after the Ace of Clubs. Ace of Clubs came first. It's the Ace of Wands. And the Ace of Wands is card 23. And if you go right back up here, sodium has its isotope 23. So you can see how the, the, the club suit makes its way to the wand and it's 23. And this is the December 17th tarot card for Humphrey Davy, who discovered sodium. <laughs> sodium is tied to the brain. That's why Jesus says, ye are salt of the earth. What's your brain, folks? It's your brain, obviously. And it's got the eye inside of it, the eye of Horus. So your brain is the eye of Horus. Okay, that's us. You split your brain in half, you're going to see the eye of Horus. And this is a no brain. So it's the eye in the sky, but we are being used by the eye in the sky and the eyes inside your brain tied to your pineal gland. Showed that in my pineal decoded. This is, these are no brainers right here. The, the 11. 11, 11. A lot of you are seeing these numbers. <laughs> Tied to Jesus Christ, we're having the Jesus Christ superstar experience, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get into the uh, second topic now. Are we having fun yet? This one's called what? So I decided to ask the question. Thanks again to the decoder, Ethan Rucker. He does this a lot. Kind of really got inspired to do this more often. What is the eye in the sky? What is it? 71. 71. And we go, you know, we go to the primes. So, you know, a variance. The primes is 71. But it's the word God. What is the eye in the sky? Well, it's God. God in the Chaldeans, 14. And here's the 14th card. And it's representing the mind. We go back over here. Humphrey Davy discovering sodium, which is tied to the brain in the number 11. So, folks, this is your God having the human being experience, but you're being used by the script, the screenplay, outside of this reality right here. And th these are kind of no-brainers. Okay, these are just kind of really no-brainers here. And then if you look at the, um, the numbers of the G-O-D through the primes, it's the numbers of Lucifer again. It's the numbers of Lucifer again. So clearly undeniable here. And then what about this 374 with the G-O-D? You bring in the Fibonacci. This is my Fibonacci extended cipher. You can't find this uh, online. You have to create it yourself. But it will be coming out with our new, new website soon enough. 
uh, a few of us are going to be creating, so it's going to be a lot of fun. But this right here, Fibonacci, very important cipher. Look at the numbers that G-O-D is made up of, 473. That's a permutation of the 374. Undeniable. And what is 14 mean, linked to? Time. It's linked to God. It's linked to Satan. Right? It's linked to the mind. That's why we're the little devils down here. You are God in the human form, and you're a little devil. You sin. You have an ego and a spirit, and you can't help it. It's all yin-yang down here with the brain. It's all yin-yang down here with the brain, ladies and gentlemen, as we become the human being experience. So we go a little bit further. I've shown this to 71s, the 20th prime number. You know, what is the eye in the sky? has got 20 letters. 20 is calcium, our bones. 99% of the calcium in our bodies are in the bones and teeth. We get a skeletal avatar now. And now we become a G-O-D. That's how this works. And then if we take lutetium and calcium, from that 71 and 20, we add it up, you get 54. Now you're going to go right back to that phosphorus. It's going to be tied to xenon anyway, xenon and xenos, the 54th element. There's someone in my head, but it's not me. That's the eye in the sky. That's what's in your head. It's tied to Lucifer, the light bringer that makes the light for the movie. And it's the devil. It's the devil. Can't miss these layers now that you have the eyes to see them. And, you know, again, calcium is a big one because it makes up our skeletal structure and calcium is 21. And when we enter the game called life from the eye in the sky, we enter in through the number 21 tied to, you know, Saturn's 21, Zeus is 21. It's really interesting. This number 21 tied to Scandium and number 44 and 45 tied to Pandora's box and fallen angel story and all that stuff. Just case going on and on. So the last question to ask right here for this topic, what runs our brain? Well, it's pretty crystal clear. It's not us, not through this methodology. It's the number 58. And you know, I've been showing over and over. A lot of you've been showing, a lot of you've been converting puppet master into different languages like Dutch and the outcomes are the same thing, just told in a different way. It's the puppet master running our reality, running your brain. And here's the 58th card in the tarot to get the picture. We think in pictures. It's the eight of swords, which is the comedy for my life. This is my birth card. This is why I'm supposed to be showing you this information, folks. Okay. It's part of my job. It's my, it's part of my, my screenplay to break this stuff down and show you the source code playing out. This is how we're going to get into the age of Aquarius. And I know thyself. 58th card in the deck. This is the trapped and limited. That's right, because you only have so much uh, opportunity down here. You're, on, you're a puppet on strings. You know, how much free will do we have? Who knows? But I can tell you right now, you don't have 100%. That's for sure. Not using this methodology. All right, let's get into the last topic now. The womb to tomb. The womb to tomb. And uh, it, it doesn't get any more apparent than what this is saying right here. So the eye in the sky running the tomb. The eye in the sky is the womb. We go from the womb to the tomb. And we now have a, a match to scripted reality. You, you, you start off as a baby. And this is how our reality works. These ages, these ages that we live through the zodiacs, they go from the baby stage to the death stage. And then it just starts into a different age. So it's golden age to dark age repeat. And then in the human being experience, it's the golden age as a baby, move through time, and then you go to the dark age and you die. And then the cycle repeats, perhaps, through reincarnation. But we live in a scripted reality from the womb to the tomb, from the eye in the sky, and the womb is 19, the tomb is 17. These are really interesting when you bring in the tarot cards to get the picture. Doesn't get any more crystal clear than that. So eye in the sky, once again, going back to the sun, and the womb and the 19 19 being tied to the word master and then the stars born the stars born in the tomb 17th card in the tarot tied to the word tomb tied to the word life tied to the word matrix this is us right here the star is born well the star the sun is a star so we're just offspring of the cosmos Okay, it's just obviously different with being born through the birth canal and how all that stuff works. But nonetheless, it's going to be in these constructs that I'm showing here. How about the numerology of these two cards from womb to tomb, the sun and the star, right back to that 52 and prison planet and tellurium, meaning earth. 
You see, folks, this is this is such a beautiful script. And getting getting mad or angry is like that's the that's kind of like the less exp, uh, the less pleasurable experience. When you embrace it and you start to decode it more and more, and you figure out what your code is, that's where the fun begins. So, how about the cards of illumination to finish up this presentation? So the the womb is nineteen. It's the nineteenth card in the in the cards of illumination. It's the six of clubs. This card means victory. Of course it does. And the number six tied to your third eye. Eye in the sky is tied to the third eye. This is not an accident. And then the tomb, where we all land in earth, earth is 17, tomb, it's the four of clubs. Remember I showed this earlier. And if you take these two cards together, you get 64 and now you have our DNA. You have the total amount of squares on a chessboard, 64. That's why black and white checker chess, chess boards are not evil. They're not evil in the least bit. It tells you you're playing the game of duality while you're down here becoming a human being. 64 different codons in our genetic code. DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid is 69 in numerology. And this shape right here that this spiral makes is exactly the same shape that the sun makes as it moves across the sky. This is off my superstar decoded. The, again, these this series one, two, and three are mind blowing. They're some of my some of my best work. So if you haven't seen those series, check them out. But this is the sun at uh, taken exactly on the same day of every month as it moves through the calendar, and it makes this boomerang shape. And look at the shape it makes. Going back to this right here, you could see the shape is exactly matching up with our DNA, our, 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 our double helix, the spiral. It's right there. If you just keep moving this over and over, and just it's gonna be a zigzag. And here's the serpent. This is a pendulum going back and forth, just like this. Here's your Kundalini, your two serpents, the yin yang, you know, the energies that are tied to the, de the, e the demon and the angel inside of us. It's exactly what this is all about. We're, we're superstars. We're all stars down here playing out the Jesus Christ superstar experience. It's pretty easy to start to see this kind of stuff. And then lastly, for this decode of eye in the sky, here are the two cards that represent the womb and the tomb from the eye in the sky. And it's the six of clubs and four clubs. When you say that through numerology, you get the yin yang again. You get the 96. We already showed out, and it's tied to the brain. If you go back here to the brain with Humphrey Davy, and it's, you know, right here at the 69. The brain being 11 and found at the 34th and 35th decimal digit, 34 and 35 is 69. That's why we have this number 69 tied into the brain, the yin-yang, the two hemispheres of the brain. And then we get the, the womb to the tomb. I mean, this is all source code stuff right here, ladies and gentlemen. You can see all the layers that I'm bringing out here and how it's, it's just undeniable that we're living out a predestined script and it's your screenplay. And you know, you gotta be the star in your own movie, not an extra in somebody else's. That just may be the free will. So stop paying attention to the mainstream and go be the star in your own movie. Woo, all right, ladies and gentlemen. So that's, that's, that was a eye in the sky decode and I got some other great content coming out, but what is it that you saw during this presentation? Would love to hear your take on things. Leave your comments, drop them down below, share this video with like-minded people. If you feel the urge, uh, you know, the drill, ladies and gentlemen, I don't need to, you know, there's no force here. Uh, appreciate all of your support. All of you that have donated. Um, those of you that are interested in readings, I do have some dates available left for October. So hit me up on that. Um, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for today. My name is Logan. Until next time, you bet your bottom dollar. We will see you later.